All right, so I want to welcome everybody to the Eye Lounge, and today we are going to be talking about the Apple TV. Now, I put on my watch because I want to show you what I did today. What did you guys do in Bonaire today? Saw flamingos. What? Snorkel. Snorkel, saw flamingos, did different things like that. This, this is our last call in Bonaire for the year, so I went out and did what I did, what I do in Bonaire every single time. Let me see if I can get the pictures. I went out, oh, where is it? And I got some nice conch chowder in a bread bowl. You see my conch chowder in a bread bowl. Oh, sorry, that, that was too small, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, uh, so a little bit, little bit larger. I got, I got my conch chowder in a bread bowl. Yeah, that's nice. This is stupid. But this is what most of you do when you go home. You neglect the largest screen that you have in your household. Am I correct? You're sitting and you're fixated to your iPhone or your iPad or your Apple Watch screens, and the largest screen in your household is neglected. And why that is, is because you can only get certain content on the largest screen in your household. You can only get, you know, you can only get the content that Comcast or Verizon or these other companies are providing you. Or as of today, I still haven't been able to get it, YouTube just launched their own TV service, which gives you access to all the TV channels, unlimited DVR. When you record something, it records all the shows across all the networks. It keeps your DVR for nine months. You do not need any cable or anything like that. $35 a month. They launched it today. It is going to put everyone else out of business, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. The problem is it's only available in five select markets. I spent the entire afternoon since 2 p.m. trying to fake myself in being one of those five select markets. No. Google's a little smarter than I am. But don't worry, someone will figure it out tonight, and by tomorrow morning, I will have access to YouTube TV. I'm willing to pay $35 a month to have that. But we're talking about the Apple TV. Now, the Apple TV is not a TV. This is a Samsung TV. Since I said Samsung, I have to point out right outside there, there's a fire extinguisher. Right outside there, there's a fire extinguisher. <laughs> if the TV were to erupt into flames, run. You know how to put it out. Um, but the Apple TV is just this little tiny box right here. It's this little tiny box that plugs into your TV. Now, Believe it or not, your TVs in your cabin are actually running on modified Apple TV software. They're actually running on Mac software, but they're running on modified Apple TV software. Now, how many of you have an Apple TV already? Now, the question is, if you have an Apple TV, which Apple TV you have? Because there's this one, and then there's the, the, the larger one. And the best way to know which one you have is the remote. I have so, a if you have the silver remote, you have the older Apple TV. If you have the black remote, you have the newer Apple TV. We're going to talk about some of the differences between them. But I'm going to tell you something really cool. Do you know the new black iPhone they put out this year? The shiny black iPhone? They put out a new, they put out a new color, a shiny black iPhone. What's cool is Apple does a lot of things you don't realize they're doing. You see that there's two different colors black on there? Those are the materials. This was put out about a year and a half ago. Those are materials that they tested for the new iPhone. So they put them on the remote for a year to test how they were durable and how they wore and see if people came back with issues and things like that. So Apple never does anything not on purpose, if that makes sense. So they, they were like, okay, a new iPhone comes out and it comes in two different colors. It comes in black and shiny black. And you see the shiny black is all scratched up and has fingerprints on it and all that. And that's why there's a warning on shiny black that says, hey, it's going to get scratched up and get fingerprints on it and everything like that. So to take an Apple TV, it comes out of the box. You take power and you plug in an HDMI cable. So you plug in an HDMI cable. Major difference between this Apple TV and this Apple TV. This one, you must be able to see the Apple TV unit to control it. So there's a little infrared receiver there and you have to be able to physically see it. This one works over Bluetooth. So this one works wirelessly over Bluetooth. You're welcome to come in, you can have a seat there, it's okay. So this one works wirelessly over Bluetooth. So what's nice is with this one, yes, if I can see the TV, which sometimes I can get in between the grates, yes, I can control it. But this one, I can be anywhere. And I've got scrolls, I've got all of that. The other nice thing, this one takes a little button cell battery. This one charges with a lightning cable. So you got a button cell battery, you got lightning cable. There are a lot more differences other than the remotes. If you have the, yeah, can you trade it in? Uh, Rolando will pay you $3 for your old one, huh? $4 on a good day. But here's the thing to understand. This is the older generation, this is the newer generation. The primarily thing we're gonna focus on is the newer generation, because it's got a lot of things. And what I think is interesting is what makes these devices very useful is apps. There's a lot of different apps, a lot of different things that come in all the different apps. So you've probably all heard of Chromecast and Roku and Amazon TV and all of those others. Apple TV has 10 times more apps than the nearest competitor. 
They have over 10,000 apps on the Apple TV already because it draws from the same database as the iPhone and the iPad. So you have an app store built in. We actually have an app store. And it, this is only on the one that you got this remote here. You've got an app store right here. And you can actually scroll through. You can see the top charts. Now the top things on Apple TV now are the big content, big boys. Netflix, YouTube, uh, Hulu, different things like that, the big boys. But you've got feature charts, you've got top charts, anything you've ever bought on your iPhone before or your iPad before that also has an Apple TV app, you can see that there. So we can look at some of these. Now I'll give you an example. A company that just got an Apple TV app last week was Facebook. Facebook now has an Apple TV app for video because you know the biggest video sharing platform is what? YouTube. 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 Facebook's trying to compete with YouTube. So the big two advertising animals are Google and Facebook. So that's a discussion for another day. You'll see, here's popular TV apps and popular TV shows and popular TV episodes. The thing is, with this Apple TV, you got new apps every time they updated the full software of the device. With this Apple TV, they, all, they look very similar. That's why I keep referring to the remotes. With this Apple TV, you get new apps every single day. There's new apps that come out every single day with this Apple TV. So the other cool thing is this remote has our favorite lady that we love to hate built in. You know what her name is, right? Siri. Siri, our lady we love to hate. And it's got two microphones right inside of it. So I'm going to say I can never do this correctly because I don't seem to know how to say Curacao. I can say, what's the weather in Curacao tomorrow? What can I help you with? Come on, listen to me. It's Siri. It's not supposed to listen. I, I feel you. Oh, I didn't say. I didn't say hey Siri. I said it's Siri. Okay. Pretty windy. Oh, I got it. It's going to be pretty windy in Curacao, Netherlands, and Tilly's tomorrow. So I can go in, but I asked it that, and it's going to be really windy. So if you don't have a strap on your hat, take an extra shoelace. And the windiest place on this whole cruise. I only warn you because I've lost hats there four times. Hats with straps. No. Is um as long as we're there with two ships is St. Kitts. So if you go into St. Kitts and you've got two ships, you've got a wind tunnel right through there. You're talking 40 mile an hour wind to whip the hat right off. Last time someone was there with a Samsung phone and got blown in the water, I said that's probably for the best, but don't worry about that. <laughs> but I can go in and I can ask Siri anything. So I can ask it, what's the stock price for Apple today? And it'll go in and it'll do that. But I want to show you, I'm going to take it a little bit further in a second. Now we're on a cruise ship, so she takes a little bit longer to... Uh, not cooperate. But uh, the other cool thing is you can actually use Siri to search for an actor. So if someone name me, let's see if she wants to behave. Someone name me an actor. Doesn't matter who it is. Tom Hanks. Okay. Show me films with Tom Hanks in them. They're showing tonight on this show. They're show no, I can't show this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Someone hit a button. Let me fix this. Someone hit a, a weird button. I already know this. Hold on. So let me see if she wa if he wants to behave with me. Okay. Show me movies with Tom Hanks. But the cool thing is only Siri on the Apple TV can you get a result and then it will go ahead and refine the result. So if you say, show me a movie with Tom Hanks, if it wants to behave, which it doesn't want to behave right now, because why? Because it's Siri. Um, but if I say, show me movies with Tom Hanks, I can refine it and I can say only comedies and it'll re-refine it and say only comedies. Not only does it search Apple, it searches Apple, it searches Netflix, it searches Hulu, it searches all of these other services built together. And one of the nicest Siri tricks that I like is you can actually go in with Siri and you could say, uh, I don't have anything playing. If you're listening to something or you're watching a TV show, you can say, what did he just say? It will pause the video, rewind it by 10 seconds, turn the captions back on for 10 seconds, and then turn the captions off again, just to give you an idea of how well thought out this is. As again, it's very hard to show on a cruise ship, but what I want to show you is I want to show you some apps. Now, if you have your Apple TV that's got this remote, you have Netflix, you have YouTube, you have Hulu, you have all those other ones like that. And the problem is all of those are big, giant media conglomerates. They're all big, giant media conglomerates we've heard of before. What's cool is when you have apps, you know, I'll give you an example. A little tiny company that you've probably never heard of before made this stupid game years ago that's still the most popular game ever. It's called Candy Crush. You know Candy Crush. This little company that made it. Now that company is worth billions of dollars. And it's not something from an established provider. So when you have apps, if you have something good, you've got something good. Now I want to show you some simple apps. How many of us are from the States? Where are we from? U.S.? U.S. Canada? Okay. U.K.? Any U.K.? 
So what's cool is depending on what country your app store is set up in, you'll see different things. So if you're from the UK, you get access to the BBC iPlayer, which is something that's really cool when this goes across the pond. I can watch all the BBC shows for free on BBC iPlayer. If you're from the States, you can download all of these different apps here for all of these big channels. The problem with these is, is you have to sign in with your cable provider's account to make them work. But here's the important thing. I don't have a cable provider's account. But you, you know who has cable? My dad. Of course I use his, let's be honest. So if your kids ever ask you for your cable account, or your grandkids ever ask you for your cable account, you know why they want it? They want it to get into their Apple TV. But I want to show you one of my favorite... Can we use your Amazon Prime account? You use their Amazon Prime account, it's fair. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. So they have on CBS, they have uh -huh. a follow-up show to the good one. Okay. Now, I, I can... It's only on that CBS. All access thing, yes. So my thing won't help. You have to, subs no, yeah. so CBS yeah. is doing some weird things. It actually turns off the But I want to show you something kind of cool. Oh, this is QVC. Have we all watched like QVC that, before? Or so nice. Home, Home Shopping so Network, QVC, you never heard of this before? This is live video. I'm not talking about QVC. I don't want to talk about QVC, but here's what I want to talk about. We now have live video back here. But on top of that live video, we have a layer of interactive content. This is where the Apple TV gets very interesting. So we're watching live QVC from a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. And if I wanted to buy these pots, or whatever they're actually selling right now, this is live. If I wanted to buy these pots, I can click in and I can actually go ahead and I can buy the pots. No. <laughs> My parents don't have a QVC account. But you can see, I can see the items that are on air, the items that are coming last, the items that are there last. What the Apple TV does is it takes TV and it makes it smarter. So you can sign in and you've got all of that right there. So QVC, I think, is one of the coolest apps that you have for that. Do any of you do uh, watch Major League Baseball? Yeah. If you watch Major League Baseball, there's an MLB app and you can watch a lot of MLB stuff on here. The only trouble with the MLB app is blackouts, baseball blackouts. You've heard of well, blackouts. I have it on DirecTV. You have it on DirecTV. Can, direct I, TV. can you, I then sign in for that? Yeah, you sign in with your, if you have the MLB season yeah, pass thing, right. then you sign in with your MLB account or your season pass, and you can go in and you can see all these games. And as long as it's not a blackout, you can see those games in your area. Here's the thing, though. This whole folder here, this is traditional media companies. A lot of people think I'm crazy when I say this, but traditional media companies won't be around much longer. They really won't be around much longer because we're getting into the area where people are making content, and unique content's coming out, and you don't need big backgrounds to do content, cameras are cheap and things like that. But what I want to show you is these are traditional media companies. I want to show you some web media companies. The cool thing is these are things you've probably heard of before, but you don't need everything in this folder, other than QVC because it's free, but everything in this folder, you need to have a TV account. You need to already pay for cable to have that. The stuff I'm going to show you for the rest of the class is fully dependent on the internet. It does not depend on you having cable. It does not depend on anything like that. It is solely only dependent on the internet, so I don't need to steal my parents' credentials to do this. So I'll give you an example. This is all web media. I'm sure we've all heard of TED Talks before, correct? You never heard of a TED Talk? Yeah. They're, they're really quite interesting, and TED has made their own app. And you can go in and you can say, I want to be inspired. I want to laugh. I want to do this. What a TED Talk is, is very famous people go up and they talk about something that they're very passionate about. Bill Gates went and talked about uh, dengue fever, which is big in Africa. He went out to the front of the stage. There was a couple thousand people in the auditorium, and he released a jar full of mosquitoes. He said, good luck. Great TED Talk. He said, good luck. You can say, none of them had dengue, but it was just kind of... I can go and watch something random, funny, persuasive, jaw-dropping, inspiring, courageous, and you can choose all of these different things, and these are called TED Talks. Here's the coolest thing, though. None of this you have to pay for. As long as you have an internet connection, this is free entertainment that comes from the internet, and this is also available as apps on your iPhone or iPad. One of my favorite apps that does not like to behave with me a lot, so, but I want to show it to you, it's called Hyper. All it is is it's a curated sex selection of videos from all over the internet every single day. So it's 10 videos every single day. I think it's one of the prettiest apps I've ever seen on any platform. Now it takes two or three tries to get it to work on a ship because it's very, 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 very heavy. Um, what I mean by heavy, you'll see in a minute. It's a very pretty app. And you can get high, here we go. So you see today, April 5th, there's some weird things that show up in this app. Just understand. Uh, but I, I open this up every morning and I take a look at it and I can read 
all of these different things. Can tech put a stop to death? And they explore how technology is making people live for longer and things like that. So this is this generation's newspaper. My generation, this is our newspaper. We open this up every morning and we read this. It's called Hyper. Uh, what if we run out of food and water? And it's people that analyze really interesting things. Uh, and there's some nerdy things, there's some different things, but it's really cool because every single day you get different things and every weekend they have a weekend recap of the best things from those days. Now, if you install this Hyper app on your iPhone or your iPad or your Android phone, it will actually download these videos so you can watch them when you don't have an internet connection. So when I lived in, I lived in all over the world and I would take subways and stuff like that, I would download that app and I'd be able to figure that out. Or when I go out on a short excursion, uh, you've ever been to, you ever been to Warnemunde, Germany and gone to Berlin before? It's a three hour bus ride. You're just wondering what to do for three hours on the bus. You watch Hyper videos. But that's cool. If you have kids or grandkids, Mickey video. These are all videos from Disney that they're no longer selling or anything like that, so they just put them up for free. We all heard of Reuters, the TV network. This is called Reuters TV. It's very, very different. Here's the cool thing about it. You open it up, it says, how long do you have? 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, so you say 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 10, 15, 30, and it will make a news channel based on that. So this is something that's a supplanting of CNN if that makes sense. And this is good, high quality content from all over the internet. That's the idea. So it's good, high quality content that's from all over the internet. Now Reuters is a company you've heard of before, but there's another company called Newsy. Have you ever heard of something called the five whys? Basically when something happens, you're supposed to ask why, not once, but five times. So what this does is there was something that happened, let's just say there was something that happened on a cruise ship the other day and you want to know why, they ask the question why five times. They go, well, this happened because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this. And they delve into a story a lot deeper than someone like a Bill O'Reilly or an Anderson Cooper would. And it's actually built. Then there's HBO. We've all probably used HBO before, Game of Thrones, anything like that. You can actually subscribe to HBO for $15 a month right through the Apple TV. No need for a cable network, no need for anything. It'll work anywhere in the world. Then there's some dumb apps. I love this one. I'm not going to open it up because you never know what you're going to see. It's called Zero Views. It just shows you YouTube videos that not a single person has watched yet. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a YouTube video that not a single person's watched yet. But more than just content, what you can do is there's all kinds of different games, such as the Beverage Package Evaluator. Love this game. It checks how well our beverage packages have been doing for us. If you can find the shell, you're not making good use of your beverage package. Um. <laughs> and it just gets harder. You're like, okay. Oh, crap. I made too much use of my beverage package. You know, this is great, but how do we know about all these apps? How do you know about all these apps? So here's a good question, and I'm going to show you this. There's actually a featured section in the App Store. So when you open the App Store, these change every single day. They show you new apps, new free apps, new paid apps every single day. Now, I found these over years. I found a whole bunch of different apps. Here's the really cool thing though. Well, I only have one remote. So what can I do with one remote? I can actually go ahead and I can play games against different people. They download an app on their iPhone for the game to control it. And I have the remote. And this remote actually has a touchpad on it. So if I wanted to add a player, let's just add a player. I'll make it easy. And this is a music game that we're about to play. And we're going to go to, let's go to something that's actually, the last good music was made in about the 80s, in my opinion. I was born in 87. That's the last time we had good music being made in my person. The, the stuff nowadays is just trash. But what's really cool is this is going to go ahead, and it's a game that I can play. And I can play with up to six people on here, and they just download the app on their iPhones and their iPads, and it interfaces directly with the TV. So I've got a direct interface on the TV, and... Okay, and I swipe to the right, because it's Don't Worry if You Have that's a racing game. Monkey didn't do very well. Oh, I didn't get it. It didn't register. Sorry. Thank you for That's Cindy. This is what we call good music. We're not familiar with this stuff anymore. Um, okay. But the cool thing is you can play this across multiples. And what's also very cool is all the sensors that are inside your iPhone or your iPad are in the remote. So if you wanted to play something like bowling, you did see that swing I made to the left by mistake. So it did. Uh, 
Which is a Wii. It does like a Wii, yeah. The Wii's actually been replaced with something called the Switch, which is another console I have. But I want to show you a little look at the future. Now, this little look at the future I'm about to show you, I am going to warn you, it does have some adult language inside of it. Let's be completely honest. We're all adults in this room. I want to give you a pitch of something that you've probably never heard of before. The name of this is called Late Shift. It's a really cool app. It just became available on the iPhone and iPad. It is a 16 hour long movie, but it's only actually an hour and a half. What you do is while you're watching the movie, you choose the actions that happen in the movie. And what's, this is cool because why I think this is really cool is this is gonna be the end of commercials, which is what I love. The end of commercials is a wonderful thing. We all DVR and we fast forward through commercials. Do you know why you have to watch four minutes of commercials when you're watching TV? Because there has to be a commercial that relates to you and 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 you. If you had a device that knew enough about you, would you need to have commercials for everyone or would you just need one commercial? So what this is, is this is very, very cool. I love to show this because of the tech here. Now what I'm doing, what's also very cool, I like it to be a little bit louder, so I've connected a speaker. So the newer Apple TV also has Bluetooth in it, but the name of this app, it's called Late Shift. And it is a movie that you decide what's gonna happen during the movie. Late Shift? Late Shift. And app. what app is that? Is that the app? It's an app called Late Shift. Oh, okay. Yep, I'm going, I'm pre-warning you that there will be some language. Um, we're gonna resume. I'm gonna let it play for a minute. Ah, let me see if it wants to play. So I'm going to leave it for a second. So in a couple, it, I can't really force it to come up, but it's going to actually ask you what you do. And the coolest thing about this app is what it asks you, I think it's probably easier for me to go this way. It has different episodes inside of it, but it's one continuous movie. It's going to ask you what you want to do. And when it asks you what you want to do, there we go. So I'm going to pause it down for a second. Whether he runs or he goes, yeah, this is going to come up pretty quick. And there is no delay. It's instantaneous. So I want you to think about this. Imagine if you open up a TV show and it asks you, do you want the actors to drink Coke or Pepsi? The advertisers know that you're actively engaged. Does that make sense? That's worth so much more than something you can fast forward through. So in a few seconds, it's going to ask him if he should run over the fence. If he should leave and he should jump over the fence. Ninety percent chance he'll get shot, but he's injured. Make a seventy. Should he, do, should he go chance over the wall? In this Try over the wall. Thirty yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. The chance of taking a bullet is less than twenty-one. Is it worth a try? Go. Go. Stop. Shit. <laughs> but can you see where that's headed? Because here's the thing: that is worth so much more to an advertiser than a commercial because it shows that you're actively engaged and it proves that you're actively engaged in that. And that's a proof of concept. You'll never see anything like that before. But the cool thing is if I said no go, he wouldn't have gone. And if I'm sitting in a room with 20 people, guess what? We can all vote on our iPhones <laughs> and the majority wins. And if we forget something, inaction is also an action. So the failure to actually choose is also an action as well. And I think that's a really cool way to wrap it up because this is the future of where a lot of this content's going to be. But I wanted to show you one last thing I didn't show you that I, I apologize for not showing. Late night TV. What? Late night TV. Late, night TV. Late, shift. Late shift. Late shift is the name of it. It's called Late Shift. Now you can you don't need an Apple TV to get it. You can get it on an iPhone or an iPad. It's the only app I show you that costs money. It's like a five dollar app to give you an idea. It's a pretty big app. But the last thing I want to show you, and this is regardless whether you have this Apple TV or this Apple TV, I want to go back to the beginning. We've got apps, we've got content, we've got all that, but I did want to show you my lunch from today, which I didn't show. So if I go in, I want to show you how I did this. There's my lunch from today. I'm going to scroll through. I really don't know what we're going to see right now. Um, there's my lunch, and then I've got my snow cone, and I've got my ice cream. But instead of showing you on this tiny screen, I'm showing it to you on my iPhone. I want to show you how. As long as you have an Apple TV of some sort in your house, and the Apple TV is connected to your Wi-Fi, which what's very cool, if you get a new Apple TV, you're going to plug it in, and it's going to say, you can type in your Wi-Fi password, you can do all that, or you can just take your iPhone, put it on the top, and it automatically connects to your Wi-Fi, does your Apple account and everything. 
the, all you have to do, as long as you have your phone and your Apple TV on the same Wi-Fi network, you just slide up from the bottom of an iPhone, of an iPad, you do it with a Mac as well, and there's something that'll be called, you'll see it, you'll, it'll be called AirPlay. Yeah, your finger's broken. What? You have to open the screen. You gotta go in. Yeah, then slide up from the bottom. Your finger's broken. Um, I didn't go you, should, down far. you should get that checked out. Um, but you'll see something called AirPlay, and I can just hit right there, and I can say AirPlay to the Apple TV, and then I can show you all of my pictures, all of my movies, everything on the Apple TV. Now tomorrow we're going to talk about something. We're going to be talking about Facebook Messenger. Before Facebook Messenger, I'm finally going to give my review on this cool little gadget. Where'd it go? On this cool little gadget I got the other day. And what I think is interesting, I did a little more research. This is actually really cool. This little gadget is made in the same factory that the iPhone is. It's made by the company that actually manufactures the iPhone. It's made by Foxconn. They actually manufacture the iPhone. I imported this from, I think, China. Uh, and what's cool is, this is actually a full 360 degree video. This is me getting a snow cone earlier today in 360 degrees. Come on, play. Facebook We're going to talk about Facebook Messenger tomorrow. So Facebook Messenger, but I'm going to show you before the class, we're going to talk about this guy, which is a 360 degree video player. But I have right there, and it just plugs right in the bottom of my iPhone. I'm going to show you this in the 10 minutes before the class tomorrow, uh, so you can see what's going on there. And then what's really cool, I think my favorite feature about it, where'd I put it? Here's my favorite feature. If you wanted to actually view it in 3D, you take your iPhone, you put it in the box, and the box has lens. This is how well thought out this product is. Here's what's unique about this product. You're never going to see it in the store because they're not paying the millions of dollars it takes to get in the store. They're not Samsung or anyone like that. I am not going to give a full recommendation until I use it for about a week, but I want to show it to you. I want to show you what it does. I'm going to explain how it works and all that stuff because I played with it enough to talk about it. That's going to be tomorrow at 7.50 and tomorrow at 8, we're going to talk all about Facebook Messenger. Cool? Does that make sense? Go enjoy the show. Enjoy the rest of your night.